Welcome to A Girl on Concern. But right now, we'll move right directly to Scott Fernandez. Welcome to the program, Scott. Well, thank you for having me. We appreciate it being We wouldn't here. call you a regular, but you're, this is a couple of times you've been on now, and uh, yeah. we don't have a lot of time. We kind of squeeze things together here. And uh, just basically, what is the issue facing Portlanders with their water? Right now, we're seeing um, a process that's going on called a variance process, and we're also seeing um, uh, huge amounts of increases in our drinking water uh, rates. The last three years we've had a 47 percent increase and over the next five years if this LT, if this EPA regulation continues down this road we'll see an 85 percent increase in, in five years in addition to that. So, so that that's quite a bit of money. That's well over double then. Exactly. And one of the, the issues of uh, senior citizens in my neighborhood is the cost of living uh, that's, that they're going to be hit with and the seniors throughout the, the area and especially the um, Social Security uh, cost of living adjustment that hasn't taken place for them in their Social Security checks over the last couple of years so they're going to be hit very hard as, as this rate increases continue to rise if we don't stop this. Mm -hmm. So when you say you, we need to stop this and you mentioned EPA so there's from what I know and I know the viewers may not be aware of what's going on with this the Environmental Protection Agency is is uh, demanding some kind of change right? Is that what's going on in, 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 in our water systems? Right they want us to uh, treat our Bull Run water either through filtration or ozone or ultraviolet radiation and they want us to cover our open reservoirs um, and place our water in storage, covered storage tanks and the community opposes both of those uh, avenues and that's what we're fighting right now. Right and by the community you probably mean the citizens and whereas when you were on last time uh, you were talking about that the uh, there is a move to cover these up and the person that designed it, I think, was the same one that designed one in Seattle, which which was a uh, which became problematical. Right. So what I gathered from when you were on last, I'm kind of abbreviating this, so that, so that uh, folks can catch up with where we're where we're at with this, uh, there really isn't the need for it. Right. We've established for for many many years that there's no public health problem. There's never been a public health problem within the Bull Run system in the hundred years plus that it's been in existence, because it comes from a the Bull Run water comes from a pristine lake up in up near Mount Hood, and uh, the covered re or the reservoirs that are, have remained open the whole time have never had a a public health problem either, as opposed to covered reservoirs in other parts of the country that have had deaths and and problems with uh, microorganisms. We have never had a problem like that. And so why are they mandating this then? Because it's just a blanket mandate across the country? Because it's a one-size-fits-all uh -huh. regulation that did not take into consideration the unique pristine um, situation that we have here in Portland with no sewage exposure. And that's the big key right there. And so no sewage exposure means that there's there's less chance of what's a gypsosporidium or whatever that, that Right. It's called cryptosporidium and we yeah. haven't found it here for, for many, many years and the species that were found are not the ones that are are problematic for humans. Uh, the the problems that we've seen over the years in other utilities have sewage exposures that have chemicals and other microorganisms involved with it also. But that has not been a problem here in our situation. Mm -hmm. So you know, obviously, this we're, we're talking about the city council has got to make this decision, and, and politics is very, very seldom reasonable where you can say, "Hey, this is this makes sense. Why don't we do it?" Uh, why is the city council pushing this if it's, if we don't really need it? And and, and is there a, a measure that allows us to waive this? There are provisions for that. The city council is one of the problems is that. Part of the regulation was written by members of our own Portland Water Bureau uh, many years ago, and that's been kind of a conflict of interest. Uh, the city council is saying, well, we have to follow the law, the regulation, and the community has said, we would like to have you challenge this and provide um. a, a waiver that would exempt us from this regulation, and that would be the end of it. It's a very simple procedure to go through a waiver. Uh, it's just an agreement between us and Congress and the EPA that says we recognize that Portland does not have a public health problem with the way things are now mm -hmm. and we're not, we're not going to force them to add uh, unnecessary treatment which right now is proposed to be ultraviolet radiation which can add toxins uh, with its reactions with surface water. It can add formaldehyde and aldehyde and ethers that aren't currently there. So these are toxic and carcinogenic. 
and if we cover the reservoirs like the EPA wants us to do, then the radon that comes up from the well field does not have a, a place to escape, which it does now harmlessly, and ethers and, and chloroform and other gases would be coming into our homes and businesses and workplaces and schools. Some schools. Boy, there's a lot of directions to go from there. So I just back up and say, you say covered. Does that mean they just put a film over the water or they put a dome of some kind over the top of it? Or what, what, what do they consider covered? What they plan on doing is decommissioning and taking out of service the reservoirs at Mount Tabor and at Washington Park, which have served us well for over 100 years and they're building uh, one right now at Powell Butte and they want to build another one starting next month at Kelly Butte which we don't need either one of those if they would just understand that, that this problem does not exist which they don't. So they're go well, they went ahead and built this so apparently they don't have any any desire to uh, put in for that waiver then. At this point they are trying to do what they call a variance which is not satisfactory to to our group and to many other groups because it is a temporary solution and it is reviewed every three years. The Water Bureau has spent millions of dollars and spent several years trying to get through this process. The EPA has not been really cooperative because they've changed definitions and benchmarks along the way so it's been inconsistent and unreliable. And the, the Portland Water Bureau has then still gone on to do substantial rate increases that we've seen over the years and it hasn't stopped them at all. The variance process is, has, will not end until the end of this year, beginning of next year, and we're concerned that, that that will give the excuse of the Water Bureau and the City Council to say, well, we've gone too far, we can't turn back, and we're not going to ask for a waiver. So we've been demanding that they and the congressional people ask for a waiver, which is very simple and very enduring. So you say congressional, so this is so Salem has it can weigh into this too as well. Salem will be part of this also. So you've got many layers of government that are, are weighing in on this and a lot of political stuff that can go on with a, with a variance. With a waiver, it's very simple and it's just a, an act of, of the EPA or Congress and it's all done. And, and then we won't have any more rate increases and we won't have to worry about the excessive uh, cost that it's going to mm -hmm. do. So was there a vote at City Council to do this or not do it? Apparently, I mean, you know, they they've they've gone with the, not the, they've gone with the variance. Did they vote to do that? They voted for the variance, and uh, they did not vote for the waiver because they do they want to go with the variance because it keeps their they can control the process of that. With the waiver, they cannot control the process, and they don't like that. What what control? What what do you mean by the control? I mean. They can, they've, the city council has controlled the variance process up to now in taking three and a half years to this point to uh, select the people that would do the sampling which have conflicts of interest and to, to continue on with this variance process that we don't need to continue with right now and we're spending a lot of money to do it. They control that. If the waiver was enacted that would be from Congress and EPA and that would be out of their hands. So, man, you, you haven't put it in this term, but, but uh, are we kind of dealing with a good old boy network here? Exactly. The, the administrator of the Water Bureau, his good buddy, is the one who is going to receive some of the contracts that are involved with the treatment plant and covering the reservoirs. And we feel that's a conflict of interest. And those treatment plants are the ones you're talking about on Powell Butte and Kelly Point, you said? Kelly. Right. So we're talking in excess of a billion dollars, including debt service, to do all the stuff that they want to do. Which is a lot of money. And that's part of the reason why our r r rates are going up then. Exactly. And we feel that these rates are still underestimating the true cost because of inflation and other things that are going to, in to take place over the years that these take place. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember when you were here last that there was some kind of talk, and you had a great PowerPoint, and I wish I would had a way to get folks to, to tune into that. Uh, if you go to uh, uh, it, uh, youtube.com slash philosopher seed and go on down, there is the uh, PowerPoint presentation that you right. gave. It's what, what, you're in December or something like that? Right. And uh, folks can go down there. If, they've, if, they've, if you've got the, uh, the patience to go and look that up, it's, you know, 45, 50 minutes long, and it really s spells it out. But the reason I remember that is because you were showing some um, some cover up in Seattle that uh, was disintegrating and and uh, and uh, making the water unfit to drink. And the same person that designed that is the one that's designing down here. Do I remember that correctly? Right. You're exactly right. And the same construct, the same corporate engineer that did that up there, it became a defective situation and stuff was leaching into the water up there. And they are going to be doing the same one, the same covering down here with our reservoirs if, if this continues.
So, it, you know, it just seems a no-brainer, as things often do when, when the citizens look at it dispassionately and they're not, they're not uh, hoping to, uh, I won't say enrich their friends, but sometimes that's the, that's the situation. But uh, they have a completely different way of looking at it than, than us folks out here that, uh, that have to, uh, you know, my, my bill comes what? Every three months it's 180 bucks. So, so, you know, as you're talking about in five years, it could be $300 or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Or more. Or more. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I can't be poning up that kind of bucks. And it's certainly people who are, are on uh, limited incomes, like you mentioned, the elderly, and, and, and their, their situation is getting more dire all the time with, with the cuts, the budget cuts and things like that, and the, and the health care. Um, why doesn't the city council respond to that part of the situation? How, how do they talk their way around the fact that it's going to cost people more money and the fact that it's not going to guarantee us any better water and perhaps even worse? What do they say when you, because I know you've been to the city council and you've talked about this. We, we've talked to them many, many times over the years. Their answer is simply we have to follow what EPA tells us. But and they don't. I know they don't. Mm -hmm. I know they don't. We mm -hmm. all know that they don't, and they still, that's what they hide behind. And that's been one of the big differences that we've had with city council. And that's been a big problem because you're right, this stuff, anything that they do, added treatment or covering the reservoirs, will degrade the drinking water mm -hmm. for our children and for elderly and for people that are, are, mm -hmm. are you know, going to be drinking it. So, so uh it really made sense to me when you were on last time how it will degrade it. But if it's open now, then it, it can breathe, basically. Exactly. And if they close it up, then, then the different chemical reactions, because water is, is a chemical, it's a universal solvent, it, it, it is active and it, 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 the molecular structure and all that, it, uh, it goes through changes. And if, if that is capped off, what, you're a microbiologist, what, what does that do? Well, it does quite a bit of negative things because, like you said, the, the, the air and stuff makes a big difference in having it. The oxygenation alone of the water that we have in our reservoirs currently adds for a natural disinfection process. It makes it a cleaner um, product and it, it tastes better. And when you have the covered reservoirs, the sunlight doesn't interact with that and it causes nitrogen-based chemicals to be generated in the darkness and so that is a negative effect also those are also cancer causing so those things have not been told to the public but those are going to happen if they do that so what uh, what information is on the, the what is it uh, Oregon Live or no maybe that's something else whatever the whatever the the uh, website is for the city what kind of information are they putting out there they're putting out what what serves their purpose of their argument if they go to our website citizens for Portland's water You'll, have, uh, you'll see a document there called The Benefits of, of Deep Open Water Reservoirs that was written several years ago that, it, that tells exactly what I'm talking about now and gives references and will explain it quite good. So that's Citizens well. for Portland's Drinking Water? For C Citizens for Portland's Water Portland's dot org. Water dot org. Right. All right. I don't know if we got that on the graphics, but it's, we'll uh, underline that for folks out there. Citizens for Portland's water.org water.org right. and uh it'll bring up some of this information and they and you will have some information from your own perspective there right and now here we are we get down to the same thing we talk about on this show a lot if people just kind of say well i can't have any effect or i've got other things to do this will happen because it's basically going to happen now unless the citizens intervene is that a fair assessment that's exactly right and that's one of the reasons why we're going to have uh, a lecture this week at Portland State on Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock in the uh, Smith Memorial and they'll be at room 203 and we're also going to have a huge rally down at City Hall on Earth Day which is this Friday from noon until 1 o'clock and we'll have many many people there with signs telling the City Council and people at City Hall mm. that we want a waiver and we want our rates reduced because this is not going to be good for our cost of living in this town. Mm -hmm. Rallies are a good way to go. A lot of people think they don't work, and, you know, a lot of cases they may not, but they are nudging things in that direction. And if, you know, we get quite a few people showing up, is there, any, is, is there anything going on during city council during that time specifically relating to this, or is this just Earth Day and 
Earth Day, but the City Council is now going through the process of reviewing budgets for each bureau. So they will begin. This is not going to be this. It's not going to be a one and done. This, there will be more actions that will be taken over the next few weeks, because the budgets will be reviewed, and we want to get them their attention. But one thing that they need to know as elected officials that this is going to be an election issue. We have an, an election within a year, and this will be a big election issue unless they start listening to us. And so the people that don't go along with this, you know, we need to stop it, that are elected officials may not have a job a year from now. Uh, who, who is in charge of the Portland Water Bureau now? Randy Leonard. Leonard. Now, what is he saying about this? He's saying he needs to follow what EPA tells him to do, and he's... So we have the yeah. Maverick who's always wanting to go against the against go against the, uh, the, the 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 way of doing things. Who's saying he wants to knuckle under and do the way it's supposed to be done? Right. Because he's always the loose cannon, seems like. Right. Except here. <laughs> and he has done nothing to to request a waiver. And that's really the big problem is that this waiver could be done. It could have been done years ago. It would have saved us a lot of time and a lot of money. And it would have been the efficient and correct thing to do. And he hasn't done it. He hasn't lifted a finger for the waiver. It basically sounds like the waiver has been politicized. Very much so, and that's the unfortunate thing. Mm -hmm. What does uh, Sam Adams and some of the other folks weigh in? They're all going along with him at this point. So that's been uh, unfortunate. So they're not standing up. Do they? Did, did they have any views? Was it, was it unanimous back there when they voted to do the? Not the waiver, but the other... The variance. The variance. Was it unanimous? Right, because I testified in December not after I was on your show about the variance versus the waiver and because they were going to add a million plus more money to doing the variance, and I testified against it, and they said, well, we're going to continue down this road even though we don't have to. Um, you know, we're going to spend this money. Um, it just didn't need to happen. We could go right now and ask for the waiver. We could have gone a long time ago to ask for it. So basically, they're saying it's your money, not ours. Of course, obviously, they pay for water too. But right. at the same time, it's it's. Uh, and to me, it's not even a situation with with the, with the money. Although you know, when it comes time to pulling up the money, it's going to be a drag. But it seems to me that it's 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 uh, providing fresh, clean water for folks, and also it's the reasonable thing to do. Right. I mean, because it's all. It, it's something that is going to affect everybody. And it's, it's one thing that, is, that does unite the community as a whole. And we've got other things as a community that, that are a priority to, doing, to treating for a problem that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And they, the city council understands that, but it's the politics, like you said, that, that have intervened, unfortunately, for the welfare of the people. That's too bad. How much did that, uh, whatever damage or problem that was happening up in Seattle, how much did that add to their water bill? Well, their water bills are quite high, and these things are adding to it. So, yeah, it does. They are probably one of the top five in the nation just for water bills. Really? Yeah, and, because and of all that stuff. And they probably have a f fairly good access to water, like we do, I would think. Right. Up in Washington. They have a good system, but but they the engineers got to them before they got to us, and that's been the problem too. They've had to really over overdo their system more than they needed to do. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, even scientists sometimes will disagree, and uh, if you even listen to both sides, and, and it seems to me that the uh, uh, minds were made up that they were going to go with the EPA, and but you know, we we've had uh, we've had uh, in the past, like a while back, they voted to go against you know joining up with the P, the JTTF, the, the FBI. You know, they don't always knuckle under. Right. So they show they have a backbone, even though that was under a different mayor. And uh, we probably should uh, sum up a little bit and then move along. You say that there's going to be something going on Thursday. Now, will that information be on that website? Yes, it will be. Okay, that was uh, for citizens? Citizensforportlandswater.org. Citizensforportlandwater.org. And right. is that also the name of the uh, Facebook page? Friends of Bull Run is one of the Facebook pages that we use. Yeah, All right. So that would be good for them to see also. All right. So uh, the main thing is uh, I'm sure that the things that people can do right now, those those two, the rally that you're saying is going to be on um, Friday at noon in City Hall. Right in front of City Hall on, on the fourth side of, of City Hall, 4th Street side. All right. Now that, that's an important one. But some folks work, they can't get there. But do you think it still would work and, and be useful for folks to call up to Randy Leonard and, and to uh, Sam Adams and say, hey, you know, what's with this waiver? Obviously, right. they're not going to talk to him. But, you know, they get a few thousand phone calls, a few hundred phone calls even, within the context of not getting a whole lot 
over a period of time, would that make any difference? It would make a very big difference. In addition to that, that we've got a uh, part of our on our website is a list of all the congressional and other people that would be involved that should be uh, communicated with also. So that would be a big help if they can't make it, email or phone call or both to the congressional people and the city council people, that would be a big help. Tell them you want a waiver. Is that the right spelling and all that? Citizens for Portland's Drinking Water, or water org. That looks great. That looks great. So you say that what, what, what uh, congressional delegation do we, would we contact in Salem? Um, we would do Blumenauer, and we would do... Oh, so um, you're talking federal then? Federal guys, yeah. Oh, okay. Blumenauer, Merkley, Wyden, Wu, Schrader, they all have an interest in this. And even Greg Walden has a, a, an interest in this because his zone comes into the Bull Run watershed from Hood River County. Oh, that's right, from the other side there. He's got an enormous one. Right. But there's still mo not much population in it, so... Right. So, so. those guys should be, should be communicated with and, and told that we want a waiver. All right. Well, okay, we should probably move along. A any final words other than uh, get off your duff and uh, lend a shoulder, s shoulder to the wheel, I guess? Well, we, the, the community really thanks you pr for providing this, this opportunity to speak about it, and especially this Friday, we hope that there will be a lot of people out there who will show up and voice their opinion that we want a waiver and show City Hall and City Council that we need to get down to business with a waiver. Mm -hmm. Have you been uh, in touch with KBU at all? Yes, members of our committee have been. All right, cable is a good one because everybody has a radio. Not everybody out there has uh, broadband or a cable. Right. So, that, all right, well, Scott, thank you for coming on. Thank you very much. I think it was a last minute thing we put this together and I hope that we've uh, made a decent case for what uh, folks need to stand up you know pretty soon uh, drinking water might be a rare commodity in the planet you've heard the statistics that a million people on the planet don't have adequate water and uh, we do here and, and we need we need to keep that and, and keep it inexpensive